Hello, welcome back. This is Jonathan Gardner covering Sergey Lang's Basic Mathematics. And this is chapter 16, which, if I'm not mistaken, is next to the last chapter. So there's 17 is left to go determinants, and 16 is on induction and summations. So this chapter honestly surprised me. When I, when I saw it at first, I'm like, what is this? And then I had to read it a couple times to really understand what he's talking about. But this is a fairly co um, powerful concept here that he's giving. So he gives us an axiom. He says induction is an axiom. And what it says is that suppose that we want to prove a certain assertion concerning the positive integers n, right? And so we will say the assertion is described by some statement, a, that has n inside of that statement. And so we're going to try to prove this for all n greater than or equal to 1 integers, where n is an integer. Okay. In order to prove this assertion for all n, we only need to prove two things. Number one, we need to prove that a of 1 is true. And then, if we assume a of n is true, then we must prove that a of n plus 1 is true. Okay. Uh, kind of a very simple assertion that you can prove for yourself rather easily is, let's just pretend I made this up on my own. Let's, pre let's pretend that the assertion a of n says that n is greater than 0, right? So we can prove that for 1. So a of 1 is the statement that 1 is greater than 0. Is that true? It sure is, right? And then we're going to prove that a of n plus 1 is true. So that says that n plus 1 is true is greater than 0. Well, we already know that n is greater than 0 because we're assuming a of n is true. So n is greater than 0. So if we subtract minus 1 from both sides, we get n is greater than minus 1. Is that true? Well, n is greater than 0. So n is definitely greater than minus 1. And so this is also true. So we've proven for all integers larger than 1 that that number is greater than 0. Uh, it sounds rather simple, but this is how it works. He then goes through some examples to kind of explain the process, but also show its power. So this one's really interesting. So in this example, he says that for all integers n greater than or equal to 1, the, assumption, the, the assertion a of n says that the sum of the numbers all the way up to n is equal to n times n plus 1 over 2. And so to prove this, we first prove that a of 1 is true. What does a of 1 say? Well, that's the numbers from 1 all the way up to, well, 1. So that's just number 1. Is equal to 1 times 1 plus 1 divided by 2. Well, 1 plus 1 is 2. 2 times 1 is 1. 2 times 1 is 2. So 2 divided by 2 is 1. So indeed, it checks out that it's true for 1. And now we're going to assume a of n is true, right? So let's prove a of n plus 1. What does a of n plus 1 say? Well, that would say that 1 plus 2 plus 3 all the way up to n plus 1 is equal to n plus 1 times n plus 1 plus 1. Let me put parentheses in like that. Divided by 2. Okay, so we're assuming that this is already true, and we're going to prove that this is true. So let's do some finagling here. Let's say that we took and we rewrote a of n. We're assuming this is true. 3 plus all the way up to n is equal to n times n plus 1. Let's add to both sides n plus 1. So we're going to add n plus 1, and we're going to add n plus 1. We're allowed to do that, right? It won't break the equality there, which we've already assumed is true. And so basically, we get 1 plus everything up to n plus 1 is equal to n times n plus 1 over 2. And we're going to rewrite this side as 2 times n plus 1 over 2. And so we get n squared plus n over 2, plus 2n plus 2 over 2. So that's going to equal n squared plus 3n plus 2 all over 2. 
and doing a little bit of factorization, we could use the formula b squared minus 4 a, wait, b, minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Or we can just try to figure out two numbers that multiply to 2 and add to 3. And indeed, 1 and 2 are those numbers. So we're going to use n plus 1 and n plus 2 all over 2. Let's check this. So we're going to have n squared term. We're going to have 1n and 2n. So that makes 3n. And we have 2. Okay, that works. And indeed, if you look to the top, that is the same as n plus 1 times n plus 1 plus 1 all over 2. So we have proven that a of n plus 1 is true if we're given a of n is true. And we're done. Right? So we proved that result only proving those two things. One was really easy to do. The other one just result involved a little bit of algebra. Okay? At this point in the book, he takes a break to talk about notation. He says, you remember that funny squiggly line you've seen before? It looks like this. This is called sigma. This is uppercase sigma. Lowercase sigma looks like this. This is also sigma. But this one's small and this one's big. Okay? And it stands for the word sum. Okay? There's also pi and lowercase pi. This one stands for product. You probably won't see pi too often. Okay? Now, we write the dot, dot, dots, and we're expecting you to fill in the blanks. But really, what we mean by adding up all the integers is we mean this. So sum from n, k, n oh, well, let's do k. k equals 1 to n of k. Well, let's start at 1, so we get 1. And then we go to the next k, which is 2, so we add 2. The next k, which is 3, so we add 3. And we keep going until we reach n, and then we get plus n. Okay, so this dot dot dot, like you look at the pattern, you say, oh, what's the next number in the series? But here we're very specific about what the series is. And so in more advanced or more complicated patterns, you can't use dot dot dot. It won't be clear. So you have to use something more like this. Okay, what if we wrote this, the sum from k equals 1 to n of k squared, what would that be? Well, the first term would be 1, because 1 squared is 1. The next term is 4. And if I did dot, dot, dot here, you wouldn't know what the next term is. The next term is 2 times 2 is 4, 3 times 3 is 9, and then 4 times 4 is 16, and then we can go to n squared, okay? And this n squared also gives you a clue into how you're adding those numbers together. Let's do sine. k equals 1 to n of sine of k. That's going to equal sine of 1 plus sine of 2 plus sine of 3, plus dot, 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 plus sine of n, okay? Now, there are some properties of this. The simplest one is distributivity. So if we have c, some constant c, times some sum, let's say sum of k equals 1 to n of some function of k, that's going to be the same as sum of k equals 1 to n of c times that function of k, right? And this makes sense because when you multiply a sum, each of the terms gets multiplied by that number. Okay? And he gives a concrete example here, in case you're having a hard time picturing what this means. He says, suppose we had 5 times the sum, this is a very funky sum, k equals 1 to n of k cubed. That's the same as sum of k equals 1 to n of 5k cubed. Okay, that's the example he uses. Let's prove another assertion about all the numbers greater than 1, greater than or equal to 1, that are integers. Suppose we have f is a function defined for all real numbers such that f of x plus y is equal to f of x times f of y. So the sum is the same as the product. Okay? I bet you don't know too many functions that do this. Well, you actually you just don't realize it yet. Okay? And we're going to prove this for all numbers all real numbers x and y, okay? We define f of 1 to be some constant a, and we want to prove by induction that f of n is equal to a to the n. So we're given this, and we want to prove this, okay? So a of n is this statement here, okay? And a of 1 is this statement here. 
Okay. So by induction, well, we already know that the, the assertion for 1 is true because we've said so. Now we're going to assume that this is true and prove it for n plus 1. So what is f of n plus 1? Well, that's going to be f of n times f of 1. And so we have, we're assuming that this is true. So that's a to the n times a, which is a to the n plus 1. And indeed, f of n plus 1 equals a to the n plus 1 is indeed the statement a n plus 1. Okay. Once again, we're given this. We're assuming this. And all we have to do is prove that it's true for n plus 1. And then we proved it for all integers, 1 or more. Okay. Another example. We want a simple formula for the number of ways of selecting k objects out of a set of n objects. This number is demoted, demoted by C, K, N. C, K, N. Okay? And this is called the binomial coefficient. Why is it called the binomial coefficient? The reason why is because when you take, take the sum of two numbers to the nth power, you're going to get the sum from k equals 0 to n of c k n x to the k y to the k minus 1. Okay? Let me kind of spell this out for you really quick. Okay, suppose we had x to the y to the 30th power. Okay? I'm not going to do this for you, but I'm going to point out what the first few terms are going to be. So we basically have this multiplied by itself 30 times, okay? So we have to take all the possible combinations for all the possible terms. Well, one term is going to be x times x times x times x times x 30 times. So we get x, x to the 30th. And there's only one of those, right? But how many ways can we get, so I'm going to put question mark, x to the 29, y to the 1, okay? So that would be x times x times x times x times x except one of them is going to use a y instead of an x, right? So one way is you do x, 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 and the last one you do y. Another way is you do x, 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 and the penultimate one, the one before the last, you do y, and then you choose x. And so on. So how many of those are there? There's 30 of them, okay? What about how many do you get x to the 28, y to the 2? Well, that would be all the combinations where you choose two y's and the rest x's, okay? And that's going to give you some number there. And so this binomial coefficient will actually help you co calculate the coefficients for each of these terms. And so you see we're going from k equals 0 to k equals n. I've started with the k equals n term here, right? And so c k n, when k is 30 and n is 30, is going to be 1, right? That's how it works, okay? So let's, is it k minus, why did the k minus 1 or 1 minus k? Let me double check. n minus k, this is wrong. I wrote that out wrong. This is n minus k. Yeah, that didn't look right. So n minus k. Okay. All right. So uh, c n k has a simple expression. So we're going to use the factorial again. The factorial just means you take that number n times n minus 1 dot 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 times all those numbers times 2 times 1. You just multiply all those numbers together. He gives you some examples. And we define 0 factorial is equal to 1. Okay? And he says, we're going to give you that c k n is equal to n factorial all over k factorial times n minus k factorial. Okay? So if you plugged in some values there, he gives in the book. He says, so c 2 4 is going to be 4 factorial over 2 factorial times 4 minus 2, which is 2 factorial, okay? And in this example here with the blue, so this term here, this is going to be C30 and let's say 29. So that's going to be 30 factorial divided by 29 factorial times 30 minus 29, which is 1 factorial, right? And so that is supposed to give you 30. As you can see, it should, because 30 is 30 times 29, so 28, 20, blah, blah, blah. And 29 is 29 times 28 times 27, so on and so forth. So only 30 is left. Okay? We can also write, instead of C and K, we'll sometimes see it as 
n over k in parentheses. And this is in the context of probabilities and statistics and the binomial coefficients. So it's not in the context of matrices and vectors and stuff like that. So it does use similar notation, okay? And he says, as a matter of convenience, if n is greater than zero or equal to zero and k is an integer such that k is between zero and n, is outside of zero and n, then n of k is defined to be zero. This is if n is greater than or equal to zero and z k is less than zero or k is greater than n. So if k goes out of bounds, as long as n is greater than or equal to zero, then this is going to equal zero. Okay, And this is actually an exercise problem. So he's going to have you prove this as problem nine. So let's talk about the exercise problems really quick. Let me just kind of coach you through these problems. They're really not that hard. Okay, So problems one, two, and three, uh, four, five, six, and I think seven, as well as eight. Yeah, seven. Okay, one through seven. All I want you to do is repeat in your mind these things. First, all we have to do is prove it for n equals one. Then we assume it's true for n and then prove it for n plus one. So you're gonna have to do some kind of algebraic manipulation. You're gonna bring in that n plus one term somehow to both sides and you're gonna to try to see that you can get the original assertion a to the n plus one, okay? For eight, using exercises one, two, and three, write out simple expressions giving the values for the following sums. This is fun stuff. It shouldn't be too hard. You should be able to reuse the results you used earlier, okay? Number nine is a lot of fun. Number 10 is a lot of fun. Number 11 is a lot of fun. You might remember doing this back in chapter one. Number 12, let's talk about number 12. Number 12 has to do with billiard balls, okay? Now, I'm gonna share a little secret with you, kind of a confession. I've been working on number 12 in my mind for probably about two months now, and just now I got it. I understand why it's not true, okay? So, I want you to struggle with number 12. If it takes you three months to figure out number 12, it takes you three months, but you need to figure this one out. It's a very subtle, but the answer, once you see it, you're like, aha, that's it, okay? If you want some clues or hints, you can join me on the Discord server. There's a link in the description. And I'll try to put up spoilers so that you won't see the answer, okay? Last, we have number 13, which is really interesting. And you're like wondering, what in the world does this have to do with anything? But I want you to approach 13, take some time with it to understand it and work on it. And it's a fun little result, okay? It's a fun little thing to do. And it actually has applications of probability and other things like that. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Take care, bye bye. This video was part of my series on basic mathematics by Sergey Lang. Be sure to subscribe and ring the bell, like and share this video. You can find me on Discord and support me on Patreon. Thanks a million.